Once upon a time, if you were looking to buy a new family car here in America, the mid-sized family sedan was the quintessential car of choice. However, that was then and this is now. And today, many Americans are leaving the family sedan for the compact crossover SUV. The best-selling models are the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CRV. Those are the king of sales in the segment. But today I brought two much more intriguing options to help differentiate you from your neighbors CRV and RAV4. On my left, the all-new 2020 Subaru Outback, a mid-size lifted-up station wagon with cladding that promises off-road capability. And on my right, the all-new second-generation 2020 Volkswagen Tiguan. Now much more sportier looking with the addition of an R-Line sport package. Arguably, I think this might be one of the better looking non-luxury compact crossovers in the segment. So if you're in the market for a new family vehicle, should you be looking at a lifted up mid-sized station wagon or the more classic compact SUV? That's what we're here to find out. So on paper, the Subaru Outback and Volkswagen Tiguan have similar missions. However, when you start looking at the cars in the real world, they couldn't be more different, especially when you look at the exterior design. One of them tries to stand out in a much more sportier, more youthful way with its R-Line sport appearance package and black accents, while the other one tries to resemble more of a hiking boot. At least that's what Subaru likes to say with all of this big black plastic cladding. Now, of course, being family cars, design isn't necessarily going to be the most important factor, but it's one that people also really like to consider as well. After all, if design wasn't important, everybody would just buy a minivan. And as you guys know here in America, that is simply not the case. Let's first start with the all new Outback. Now, of course, you're gonna have to squint very hard at this car to actually tell this is a new version. It's based off of the sixth generation model now. It's riding on an all new platform. It looks essentially like the previous generation model, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I think Subaru could have taken a little bit more risk here with the design. There are a couple of things that I like about this generation. Full LED headlights are now standard. This Touring XT version has adaptive steerable headlights. You also have LED fog lights here at the lower fascia, LED daytime running lights, but an incandescent turn signal. Uh, the front of this particular one here also has a camera, so it gives you a 180 degree view of the front fascia when you guys have it in drive. And the Subaru EyeSight driver assistance technology does come standard on this car. It's standard on every version of the Outback, so that's a very good safety factor uh, when you're considering a family car. Now in contrast, the Volkswagen, this is the second generation of the Tiguan, which was introduced back in 2018. And Volkswagen finally added some spiciness to the design when they introduced an R-Line sport package last year. This one here is the top trim SEL premium. As you can see, the front end has a very much Volkswagen blockish look to it. This car in general has always kind of been like the GTI of crossovers. It's now riding on the MQB platform, which is the same as the GTI. This SEL premium model comes with full LED headlights. These are LED low and high beams, just like the Subaru. Um, they also have an LED daytime running light, but you also have LED turn signals. Now, the asterisk here is that the Volkswagen forces you to buy the top trim level of this car. You have to go for the fully loaded SEL Premium to get the LEDs. All the other lower trims will just have a halogen headlight, which looks extremely cheap compared to this particular model here. Down here, you have fog lights, but they are just a halogen fog light as opposed to the LED. So in technicality, the Subaru has a much more modern looking lighting system, and you also don't have to buy the top trim to get that feature. In terms of safety tech, the Volkswagen also has the company's automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, lane departure alert. But if you do want adaptive cruise control, you have to go for at least an SEL trim. So again, the Subaru technically gives you more safety features as standard, but some of you may argue that the Volkswagen just has a much sportier, youthful look to it compared to the kind of old mannish looks of the Subaru. So from the side profile, again, one of these is a lifted up mid-sized station wagon, while the other one is a compact crossover. However, your eyes may be deceiving you because it looks like the Volkswagen is actually the bigger car because of the way the rear end is designed. In reality, the Subaru is actually the longer car. At 191 inches long, this is about six inches longer versus the Tiguan. Its wheelbase is actually an inch shorter at around 108 inches long. Remember, the Outback is supposed to be more like a mid-sized car. This competes with things like a Hyundai Santa Fe or a Ford Edge or a Jeep Grand Cherokee. But the beauty about this car is the fact that it's mid-sized, but it also doesn't look quite as big or feel quite as cumbersome to drive as some of the other competing vehicles. Because remember, this is a car that's been jacked up. It has 8.7 inches of ground clearance. The Subaru, again, tries to show off its rugged capabilities with the ground clearance, with all the additional cladding that you get. 
with these 18 inch wheels that have big sidewall protections wrapped in 225 60 series tires. It makes the car look a little bit more plain Jane because a lot of you know the trends nowadays are big wheels and tires but some of you may really appreciate the rugged capability of this car. You could essentially go up curbs, hit a pothole, take this thing off-roading and not be terribly worried about scraping the actual vehicle. Now, as you can see here, Subaru goes a much more traditional sense with the actual roof racks. These are standard equipment on every Outback. And the beauty about them is they have this cool little thing feature where you can actually release this and you can actually swing this over and create the crossbars. This is a very much unique Outback feature that a lot of owners like. And it's kind of really cool how Subaru builds it in into the actual roof rails. These are the ones that you get from the factory. So there's no need to add, you know, an expensive dealer accessory like all the other competitors charge you. The one cool thing about the Outback is even though this car is a wagon, it's actually taller than the Volkswagen. At, uh, it's about 0.8 inches taller versus the Volkswagen in height. And as you can see at five foot seven, I actually can't reach over to the roof of this vehicle, which in cars, I usually can. So again, this is where the Subaru kind of gives you that SUV versatility. Now in contrast, the Volkswagen Tiguan uh, is a lot bigger versus the first generation model. It has a slightly longer wheelbase than the Subaru at 110 inches long. At 185 inches long, this is also a pretty big vehicle. It's actually big enough to the fact that uh, Volkswagen offers a third row seat in this car. If you guys go for a front drive vehicle, a third row seat is going to be standard, so you have seating for up to seven. This all-wheel drive model actually deletes the third row, but you can add it back in for 600 bucks, which is a really weird you know, way that Volkswagen does things with their options. The wheels on this particular one here are 20 inch wheels. Now, this one here with the R-Line package, of course, gives you these extra big wheels and tires. They look fantastic. Actually, this might be one of the best looking wheel that I've seen in the mainstream segment. And they're wrapped in 255 40 with tires. But again, I would probably not want to take this thing off-roading because it's got these big wheels and tires. Ground clearance is around just over eight inches. So about 0.7 inches lower versus the Subaru. But as you can see here, VW has a more kind of aerodynamic look to the roof rails. And the one thing that VW does offer is this massive panoramic sunroof which I wish Subaru would offer as well. It really kind of helps let in a lot more light. But again, it doesn't have those swinging uh, crossbars that you would have to add as a dealer option if you guys actually plan to put things on the roof. So looking at the rear of the Outback and the Tiguan, you can see both of them have their own unique design language that corresponds to each manufacturer's current design theme. But let's first start with the Volkswagen Tiguan. As you guys know, this car is based off of the MQB platform. It has a lot of the traditional Volkswagen styling elements here, but I will say that I do think the front of this car looks a lot more stylish versus the rear. I just think the rear is a little bit boring looking. I don't like the fact that this car has the R-Line package, but there's not a single R-Line badge on this car. Now, I, I do think that if they stuck an R-Line badge back here, it might clutter up the back end. I just don't think the SEL badge there is necessary. This one here is for motion, of course, to give you show you the fact that it has all-wheel drive. The taillights are kind of an incandescent LED combination. And then down here, there are these fake looking exhaust tips, which actually aren't even connected to the actual pipe. Volkswagen Audi have been very much guilty of that. There's a little bit more chrome trim here and some black accents. Now, in contrast, the Subaru's design, actually I think is the better looking option between the two. It's a very subtle evolution from the pre-refreshed models. The taillights are kind of an incandescent LED combination as well, just like the VW. And the Subaru is actually the wider car. This car is about 0.6 inches or uh, wider versus the Super, the Volkswagen and a little over 73 inches wide. That's around 72 and a half inches wide. Over here on the rear bumper, you can see Subaru again continues with more of that cladding, which is kind of which is good if you're planning to take this car off roading. And then I also like the fact that Subaru didn't bother to do anything with the exhaust. They didn't do with the fake exhaust that the VW gave you. I would much rather have this setup versus the fake exhaust system of the Volkswagen, which really just kind of annoys me. Now, looking at the trunk capacity, obviously these are family cars, so let's take a look at that. Both of them come with a power liftgate, and both of them actually do have a form where if you have a bunch of stuff in your hands, they will essentially open up the liftgate for you. The Subaru, you have to wave your hand over the emblem and it'll open up the liftgate for you. Now looking at the cargo hold, the Subaru actually offers a little bit less space versus the Volkswagen. At around 33 cubic feet of cargo space, this is still very generous. It very much competes head on with a lot of other compact SUVs in the second. Remember, there is no third row option in this car. So if you want that, Subaru will happily sell you a Subaru Ascent. Uh, the seats also fold down in a 60-40 manner. You can do that by just pulling on this little lever here. The seats will drop down, which reveals about 73.9 uh, cubic feet of space. So that again is one of the tops in the segment pretty much on par with something like a Subaru Forester, a Honda CRV, a Toyota RAV4, etc. So this offers plenty of space, which is one of the reasons why the Outback does very well. It's a very practical mid-size station wagon. Now in contrast, the Volkswagen Tiguan also offers a pretty good amount of space. Now keep in mind, this one here does not have the third row, so you get around 38 cubic feet of space. So it's about five more than what you get 
in the Outback. I also am noticing the fact that the actual space is a little bit taller. There's a little bit more actual floor to ceiling space in this car. Uh, but if you guys get the third row option, it's gonna drop the capacity to around 31 cubic feet of space. So keep that in mind. If you wanna fold the seats down, which VW also lets you do by pulling on these, although you actually have to go in there and you have to actually slam it down. <sighs> which then doesn't really reveal a completely flat floor like, floor like what you get in the Subaru. But when you do that, the uh, Volkswagen says you get around 73.5 cubic feet of space. So a little bit less maximum space versus what you get in the Outback. But there's no denying the fact that both are very practical. Both have tops in the segments in terms of the cargo carrying capacity. So these are family cars. We can talk about the exterior design until we're blue in the face, but everyone's gonna be wanting to know what's the interior like. Now, first things first, I wanna get into the Volkswagen and shut the door. It has a really solid sounding thunk. Now that's pretty much what I expect with a lot of European cars, a lot of German cars. They're always very much over-engineered. Now this particular one here is the SEL Premium. It has this really attractive looking light gray interior, which I think is actually a really nice contrast to the actual gray on the outside. I also like the black piping that you got here, some of the contrasting stitching. These are unique to the R-Line package. The seats themselves, they're adjustable in like 12 different ways. They offer a three-person memory on my side but they're only heated. You cannot get cooled seats in this car, which is a huge omission, considering the fact that you can get cooled seats on a Jetta. I just don't understand what Volkswagen was doing here. Now, uh, turn the vehicle on really quick. Let's briefly talk about this interior. If you guys are looking to watch a full review, be sure to click on the link in below where I basically show you guys a complete overview of this interior. Really, I just wanna talk about some of the differences in the tech versus this car and the Subaru. Now, of course, VW gives you two screens in here. You have their digital cockpit display here, an eight inch incarnate touchscreen display over here, which all looks relatively nice. The VW system is pretty easy to use. It's got a factory GPS. It includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Just keep in mind, this is the upgraded eight inch display. If you guys go for the baser trims, it'll have a smaller six and a half inch display without Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. In terms of the materials, VW has always been kind of the leader in this segment. And really, They've fallen behind to just being kind of average. The dashboard here has a soft touch plastic, but there's nothing in here that feels very special to me when I'm sitting in this car. It doesn't feel like I'm sitting in a miniature Audi, and that's kind of where VW has fallen a little bit there, where they're trying to pursue a little bit more sales. The steering wheel, as you can see here, is definitely the sportier looking option with the flat bottom, but this is also a pretty old steering wheel. VW has a new design with their new emblem in the 2021 Atlas and the Atlas Crossport. Above me, there's this massive panoramic sunroof that lets in a lot of light, which is nice because you can't get something like that in the Subaru. So overall, the Volkswagen cabin feels airy and open. There is a pretty high dash here, so the visibility is not as good. But let me hop into the back seat there uh, right now and show you guys what the space is like there. Now the rear seat of the Tiguan is actually one of the most spacious rear seats in this segment because when VW supersized this car and made it 185 inches long, they basically put it all in the back seat because Americans, remember, we want a lot of legroom. And there's around 38.9 inches of uh, legroom back here, which is pretty generous for the segment. It's one of the biggest in the segment. The floor here is not, is not completely flat, but you do have a USB port here. There's uh, vents back here. And then I also really like how the seats, they slide forward and back. Now that is because this car offers a third row. So you need to be able to slide this up to give third row seat passengers more space, especially uh, if you guys actually plan to put people back there. It's a really small third row. There's also a nice armrest here that folds down and then the panoramic sunroof continues to let in a lot of natural light. Unfortunately, the materials back here are also a lot cheaper. So they, they, they did kind of cheap out on the materials. So overall, the cabin of the VW is nice. It's just no longer class leading nice. So in contrast to the Volkswagen, let's hop into the interior of the Subaru. Now, first things first, let me shut the door. It doesn't sound quite as solid as the Volkswagen and German cars typically are good at that. So I'm gonna give that point to the Volkswagen. Now starting the car up. The one thing that Subarus have been known for in the past are relatively cheap interiors. And as you can see on the inside of this touring version, the company has really rectified that. This has kind of that luxury warmth feel that I expected from the Volkswagen. And it's here in this Subaru. This Napa brown leather comes standard on the touring trim. You actually have genuine stitching here across the dash, across this part of the dash. It's soft touch here on this upper portion here, although this is a hard touch plastic trim, but this is also kind of housing the sensor here, the camera for the driver focus uh, feature. But overall, this cabin feels especially luxurious. It's a little bit more Volvo-like, which I think Subaru did a really good job with the overall cabin quality. The other thing that's really gonna stand out is this massive touchscreen. It's an 11.6 inch vertically oriented touchscreen display. This is actually gonna be standard on every trim except the base version. The base version of the Outback will have two seven inch displays that'll kind of will break it up. 
I've actually never been able to show you guys that because it's literally the base model, but every Outback will come standard with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So that's better than what Volkswagen does, whereas you have to upgrade to the eight inch display to get that feature. Now in terms of the seats, these are the premium Napa leather seats that I've mentioned before. They are heated and cooled and they offer a two person memory on my side. And this uh, seat on the passenger side offers an eight way power. So which is one up again versus the Volkswagen. They are a very comfortable and supportive seat. Although if you guys are looking for a lighter interior option, you have to downgrade for the touring. The brown seat is the only option here on the touring grade. In terms of the rest of the interior here, uh, you can see there is a little bit less in terms of storage space. I am noticing that the Volkswagen had a little bit more storage. The VW also had a wireless phone charger, which this Subaru does not have, although you can add it as a uh, factory option for about 300 bucks if you guys want the wireless charger. I am noticing the visibility in the Subaru is also a little bit better. The dashboard is lower. The sight lines are better. There's a little bit less in terms of blind spots because the pillars here are a little bit slimmer, which is nice. But um, the tech here in front of the uh, infotainment or the inf driver information system, you only have a very small screen here in traditional gauges versus the full display that VW gives you. So again, it's going to kind of give and take. Some things like the bigger screen here in the Subaru is nicer, although I do find that the Subaru's infotainment system can be a little bit slow to boot up, whereas the VW was a little bit nicer in that regard. Above me, just a standard size sunroof. Subaru does not offer a pano roof, which they do offer on the Forester, so it's a little bit frustrating to uh, see that missing. But let's hop into the back seat really quick and check out the space. Now, one of the reasons why the Outback is so successful for Subaru is because this is a mid-size car and they do offer a pretty good amount of space back here. Subaru says you get a little over 39 inches of legroom, which is a little bit more than what you get in the Volkswagen. Although getting back here, I am saying, I am basically noticing they're pretty similar, but there's something about the VW's cabin that feels slightly more airy to me. It's probably because of the fact that you have that big panoramic sunroof. This, as you can see here, eats up into the headroom and it also makes the cabin feel a little bit dark. So again, adding more light into the cabin can really make the interior feel a lot more spacious. The Subaru also gives you an armrest here that folds down, but if you're looking for seats that slide forward and back, you can see they do not offer that in the Outback, but they do offer the ability to kind of slightly recline the seat back just a little bit if you guys want to get a little bit more comfortable back here. But overall, back seats are pretty comparable, but because of the Pano sunroof, I'd have to give it to the Volkswagen. It feels a little bit more airy. So of course, they are very different looking on the outside, but what about underneath the hood? Now, the one thing I do want to mention, the VW has these hood struts, so you don't actually have to use a cheap prop rod like you do on the Subaru. And they actually both sport turbocharged engines. Now, the Volkswagen only comes with one engine option, so let's start with the VW first. This is the company's two liter turbocharged direct injection four cylinder. That's what TSI stand stands for. This is part of the EA888 family. Now, it is an updated motor versus the previous generation Tiguan and the motor that you find in something like the Volkswagen GTI. And this car, it makes 184 horsepower, which is actually down about 16 horsepower compared to the previous generation Tiguan. It is around the same power figures as what you're gonna get in something like a Toyota RAV4 or a Honda CRV. It does also make 221 pound-feet of torque. So torque is necessarily the more important figure here when you're talking about a family vehicle. It all goes out through an eight-speed automatic transmission. Front-wheel drive will be standard. This one here has the company's four-motion all-wheel drive for about $1,300 extra. Now, this one here is also one of the heavier entries in the segment. It, at just over 4,000 pounds, this weighs roughly 300 pounds more than something like a RAV4 or a CRV. And fuel economy is rated at 21 in the city, 27 on the highway. You'll get one MPG better if you guys go for the front drive models. All Tiguan's with a towing package will tow a maximum of around 1,500 pounds. Now, in contrast, the Subaru, of course, likes to do things a little bit different because Subaru is a very quirky company. You'll actually have a choice of two different powertrains in the Outback. The base engine will be a 2.5 liter flat four with 182 horsepower, which is actually matching up quite nicely to the engine in the Tiguan. This, however, is an upgraded motor that's been new for the 2020 model year. It's a smaller 2.4 liter boxer flat four cylinder engine with direct injection. It has a turbocharger attached to as you can see, it's got a big top mounted intercooler, and this makes considerably more power. One of the highest power, of course, in the compact slash midsize SUV segment at 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. Your only transmission option on the Subaru is a linear Tronic CVT. It's a high-torque CVT designed to cope with the extra torque versus the eight-speed auto that's in the Volkswagen. Now, of course, a lot of enthusiasts are probably complaining that this uses a CVT, but you can't argue with the fuel economy. This gets better gas miles versus the VW at 23 in the city, 30 on the highway. Both of these engines are rated to use regular gas. The Subaru actually is the lighter vehicle, despite it being a little bit bigger. This weighs around 3,900 pounds, so not that much lighter but you can also tow a lot more. This will tow a maximum of 3,500 pounds if you guys go for the turbo engine. 
So starting off this comparison between the Outback and the Tiguan, I'm gonna first start in the Tiguan, which is the traditional SUV. Um, this is what people in America really want. Compact SUVs have, again, replaced midsize sedans as the vehicle of choice here in the States. The best-selling model now is the Toyota RAV4 with 450,000 sales last year. The CRV is right behind it at 380,000 sales. Now, Volkswagen with the Tiguan, they did about 110,000 last year, which is very much a lot less than the mainstream ones, but this is quadruple the number of sales that VW did in the past for the Tiguan, so obviously they're doing something right. Now for this all new generation model, Volkswagen supersized everything with this car. It's definitely much more Americanized feeling, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. The ride quality is incredibly soft. The steering is no longer the quickest you know, ratio in the segment. It used to feel like I was piloting a GTI, and now it doesn't feel that way anymore. The noise levels in here are good. It has very little road uh, wind noise, a little bit of engine noise when you start pushing it. The seats are also pretty comfortable. They don't really hold you in place during you know, corner carving, but that's not the mission of a car like this. But it essentially gives you all the things that you want. Smooth ride, quiet interior, lots of tech, good visibility. You have a great view out of the front. You know, decent sized side mirrors. All the driver assistance stuff is standard, especially when you guys go for this top end trim that includes everything. But really, there's something about this car that feels a little bit stale. It, it's a little dull. Like it's, it's kind of not memorable when I drive this Tiguan, especially when you have so many other vehicles in the segments to choose from. And compared with the Outback, which we're going to get into the Outback afterwards, the engine in this car is a, is a two liter turbo. It's a turbocharged engine, but I'm literally sitting here going, where the hell is the turbo? Even in, you know, you put it into its sports setting here, put my foot down, it's just so sluggish feeling. And I'm again, I am sitting here at sea level. I have nobody else in the car but myself, but you feel the car's 4,000 pounds of weight because it's just an underpowered engine with only 184 horsepower on tap. Now, this also has a conventional eight-speed automatic, and a lot of you are probably gonna say this is the superior transmission. I will have this over a CVT any day. So let's try another acceleration run from a stop here. I'm just gonna leave it in drive and just put my foot down. And the eight-speed in this car goes about its business with very little drama. It's smooth shifting. It's been geared a little bit wide for my taste. I, I kind of wanted it to be shifting more to keep the engine in the meat of its power band. I'm noticing as it shifts, the engine kind of falls out of the torque curve and you have to wait for, as the revs build up past 3000 to feel the turbo sort of kick in. And it's a perfectly fine transmission. I just think the VW could have used their seven-speed dual clutch that's you know, in the GTI or in the GLI. So if you guys are looking for a, basically a car that doesn't feel like it has a turbo with a traditional stepped automatic, the Tiguan is going to deliver that because it's, you know, it has that traditional driving feel compared to the CVT, which we'll hop into the Subaru in just a moment and we'll talk about the powertrain that because the Subaru has almost 100 more horsepower than this, which is significant, and they cost the same. Now in terms of the interior you know, tech in this car, I think that the two screens look good. I like the fact that you've got a big digital display here in the center. This is Volkswagen's digital cockpit. This is an eight inch in-car net display. The infotainment system in the VW, I actually wanna say works better than the one in the Subaru, even though the Subaru's got the bigger screen. And the reason being is because this is just a quicker responding system. It works a lot faster. I do wish that there was a dedicated home button on this car that takes me back to the home screen. It actually does have you know, proximity sensors there, but to go back to the home Home screen you have to hit menu here and this is essentially your home screen although it could be a prettier looking home screen Subaru has a much better looking layout there when you pull up the CarPlay I like how it takes up the entire screen versus the Subaru so this has a lot of the modern tech but I am missing things like cooled seats I don't have cooled seats which would be nice to have um, there are memory seats in this car, but I really like the, the driver recognition system in the Subaru where you get in the car and you have your face you know, set in the recognition, it knows that. Overall, I'm left feeling like the Tiguan's a little boring to drive, which is not the case that I used to feel with Volkswagens. They've, also, they've always stood out in the segment as offering a unique drive, interesting powertrains, good handling, you know, decent tech, but the tech is good. VW has improved the tech because this car has a 360 camera on like the Subaru. It's got a big panoramic sunroof, which you can't get in the Subaru either. But 
it also has a ride quality that is, you know, it's comfortable, but it's a little bit more firm, especially when you guys get the ones with the 20 inch wheels like this R-Line, which really helped to improve the look of this car. So really you want something that has the R-Line package because it gives you that much sportier look, which helps this car stand out in the segment. But let's hop into the Subaru because I'm curious to see how it drives after just hopping in and driving the Tiguan. So having just hopped out of the 2020 Tiguan and into the Outback, I'm noticing one thing immediately, and that's the fact that the Outback actually feels like the smaller car. Even though this car is about six inches longer overall, you wouldn't know it from behind the wheel because it is a slightly narrower feeling car. You feel like you're just driving essentially just a car that's been lifted up. Remember, this is a station wagon, uh, essentially, that has more ground clearance, but you still get that high seating position that a lot of buyers love. Um, when they purchase an SUV, so I think that's important, but the visibility in this car is just better versus the Tiguan. You can see out of the front very well, the side mirrors are large, there's very much an open and airy feel, and that's what Subarus are known for. It's one of the reasons why people love or owners are so loyal to Subaru because of you know the quirky features that they offer, the quirky styling, the quirky feel, but when you get in this car, you can kind of get in it and easily drive it. Now, of course, the elephant in the room is the fact that the Outback is available with an engine that just doesn't have the same sleepy factor that the Volkswagen's engine has. I mean, the two liter turbo in the Tiguan feels like the turbo is missing, to be honest, versus this car has a surprisingly good amount of lag, but it's a 2.4 liter engine. So remember, this is the optional engine. Really, the base 2.5 is the one you could probably compare because they're more identical in terms of the zero to 60 performance. But for the same money as that Tiguan, you can get this turbo version of the Outback. And I highly recommend it because with 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque, this makes it one of the most powerful, you know, mid-size SUVs in the segment, even though it's technically a wagon. And what's really appreciative is when you put your foot down and you feel that turbo kick in, this thing is actually pretty quick. It'll startle you when you first do it because you're not really expecting it. This is a boring looking station wagon on the outside, especially painted in this poop brown color that just you know, increases the stigma of old person car. But I love the fact that it's very much a sleeper. You'll get to 60 in around 6.3 seconds with the turbocharged engine just immensely faster in the real world and whenever you're looking for passing power and on numbers versus the Tiguan. I think that's going to really impress a lot of people when they first drive this thing. So the other elephant in the room is the fact that the Outback comes standard with a Linear Tronic CVT. Now this one does have the high torque Linear Tronic CVT, so it's been designed, it's been beefed up to handle the extra torque that this engine produces. And you know what? A lot of you have a lot of hatred for CVTs, and that's, that's okay, it's understandable. I don't love CVTs. CVTs in general are not the enthusiast choice when it comes to transmissions. I mean, come on, every time you put your foot down, they just kind of have this like lag to it. There's just, it's, it's just building up the revs and all you hear is just the engine whining and droning. However, Subaru has really been trying to address that in this particular powertrain. You know, it mimics shifts, which is nice because it doesn't feel like a traditional autom uh, CVT at, that, at those times. It feels more like a traditional automatic. And it's also a very responsive CVT. And that's really what's important because the old CVTs of the past were super laggy and they felt like they were slipping. This one here, put your foot down and it just quickly will drop down its ratios. Remember, it has an infinite amount of ratios and it puts the engine right into the meat of its power band puts it right into the fat, juicy part of the torque curve, so it just has so much pull, which is basically what the Tiguan is lacking. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so happy that Subaru decided to put a turbo back in the Outback. It's been needing one for so long. This has more power versus the old six cylinder that it was replacing, and it gets better fuel economy to boot. And if you guys really want, there's also paddles on the wheel, which the Tiguan doesn't have, and it'll basically mimic eight gears, like an eight-speed automatic. I can go to second here, even go to first here, Now the fake shifting definitely feels fake and sounds fake. It feels synthesized. It basically has these predetermined ratios that adjust the ratio spread to give you the feel of an eight speed automatic. Don't use the paddles is my recommendation. Just put your foot down, let the transmission do go about its business because it's been programmed extremely well. Subaru actually does a pretty good CVT. 
They've been doing CVTs since the fourth generation Outback, and it definitely shows the CVTs in their cars really put the, meat, the engine right in the meat of its power band. And it basically, ooh, <laughs> shoves you back in the seat. And this thing is plenty fast, sleeper fast, really go for the turbo. If you're considering one of these cars, go for the turbo, because it is just so good. The rest of the car in general, um, the Subaru driver assistance, EyeSight is actually one of the better ones in the mainstream segment. It does get a little bit too paranoid at times, and it's constantly beeping and whining at you and telling you to pay attention to the road, because remember, the driver focus is looking at your face, so when I'm not paying attention to the road, it knows and it tells you to pay attention, but that driver focus does a really great job when you have multiple drivers with this car. You get in, it scans your face, and it changes all your presets automatically to your setting as long as you told the system to do so. Although the Subaru, I believe, they make blind spot monitoring optional, whereas in the Volkswagen is standard, but you do get the adaptive cruise control, which is standard. You have to go you know, for an option package or a higher trim when you want that in the Tiguan. So there's like kind of like a give and take. The other thing I like to talk about is the seats in this car. I find them to be extremely comfortable. Also, this is the Napa leather. They're heated and cooled, which is nice. They're super soft and supportive. I've taken this car on a long you know, two hour road trip. Didn't have any complaints with the seats whatsoever. They also actually hold you in place relatively well. It has an adjustable thigh extender here. So these seats are plush. Really high recommend these seats. If you guys go for like a lower trim of the Outback, I tested the Onyx Edition with the StarTex. That was also pretty nice, but the StarTex does not have for uh, ventilation. You have to go for this touring trim, of course, to get the ventilation. Now, when it comes to handling, I will say that the Tiguan is the one that actually feels a little bit sportier. Um, the Outback has been tuned for comfort. That's pretty noticeable. It has a softer ride versus the Tiguan, which is fine. This is what people in the segment kind of expect. They expect a more comfortable ride. You're gonna credit that, of course, to the softer suspension. Remember, this is the more off-road capable model and the wheels and tires. These are an 18 inch wheel on 60 series tires versus the 40 series on 20s that the Tiguan is on. Now, of course, this doesn't really help the Outback in terms of looks, but it helps it in the real world with drive Driving, and these tires are going to be less expensive to replace and you're not going to have to worry about potholes as much in this car versus the Tiguan with its skinny low profile tire. So obviously the Outback has less of a cool, less of a sexy factor. Although you could factor in that this is more quirky because it's a lifted station wagon. And you know, I've seen people with their Outbacks modify these, they've lifted them, they put all-terrain tires on them and you can make this car look surprisingly cool and quirky just out of the gate from the factory, especially in this doo-doo brown color. It doesn't look particularly good. This is my least favorite color in the entire Outback you know, portfolio of color palettes. Um, the infotainment system in this car also needs a little bit of work. It does look more impressive than the Volkswagen at 11.6 inches, the di diameter, but as you can see, the car play is pathetic, how it only takes up this Ill little itty bitty portion of the screen, and this right here is completely useless. Um, Subaru also uses two processors for the infotainment system, one for the climate and one for the actual meat of the infotainment system. I think the one for the climate needs to be beefed up because when I touch it, as you can see, there is a noticeable dela uh, delay and lag which is super frustrating. Uh, and also when you first start the car up, the system has to completely boot up and that's the one that probably takes the longest. It's the most infuriating. The VWs is a little bit quicker. I also think the interface in the Volkswagen is slightly easier to use. Although I do like the home screen in the Outback where it shows you all these different widgets and you can kind of customize this if you'd like. You can also customize this screen. So surprisingly, Subaru takes the cake for a more impressive looking interior, a more luxurious feeling interior with the stitching everywhere, which has typically always been a Volkswagen realm. But it's pretty easy to see why so many people fall in love with the Outback. It's just a really quirky, cool car, and it's a speed demon when you guys go for the, the turbocharged engine. Fuel economy also, they're pretty much right on top of each other, 23 in the city, 30 in the highway. I've been averaging around 23 MPG in this car, about 22 in the Tiguan. Uh, remember, I have more of a lead foot, if you guys are a little bit more you know, conservative, you should be able to get better gas mileage. Basically because the Tiguan is so sluggish, um, you're constantly having to dip into the throttle, whereas this car, you don't have to because it has plenty of low end torque and power uh, off the line. So after spending some time with a mid-size lifted up station wagon, which Subaru, by the way, doesn't want you to call it a station wagon, or a more traditional compact crossover SUV, I wanna go back to the question that I asked at the beginning of this video, which one of these two 
family cars is the actual better one. Now, let me first talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the Volkswagen, because as you guys saw, this is one stylish looking SUV that will definitely stand, stand out in your neighborhood when it's full of CRVs and RAV4s. I especially like the R-Line Sport package the Volkswagen has done with the 20 inch wheels, the look of the front headlights. Although I will say, I don't like how you have to buy the SEL Premium, the top of the line model to give you basically this premium look that I like about this car. I also like the interior, it's very spacious, it's very roomy, it's full of a lot of tech, but it's also kind of lacking in terms of that luxury, you know, Audi-like feel that VW's had in the past. And really my biggest problem with the Tiguan, this current generation model, is the engine. Underneath this hood, it's just really slow. 184 horsepower is not enough power, Zero to 60 in around nine seconds, eight and a half to nine seconds is just way too lethargic. CRVs and RAV4s will be smoking you off the line. This is about as slow as the current generation Nissan Rogue, which is why I simply cannot pick the Tiguan as the winner because I was expecting this car to feel more like the GTI of crossovers where it doesn't. The Subaru Outback, of course, is probably the less sexier option versus the Volkswagen. Now, of course, some of you may disagree with you on, me, me on that because this particular one here is kind of the more rugged adventure seeking model. It's got, you know, all the cladding, it's got the ground clearance, it's got the, you know, bigger wheels and tires so you can basically go up curbs and go off-roading in this thing where you can't do that in the Volkswagen. A lot of you also like the practicality aspect. The roof rails are cool. It's got basically the same interior space, although the VW's panoramic sunroof makes it feel a lot more airy inside the cabin. But really where the Outback excels is the fact that Subaru brought back the XT badge on this car, the turbocharged engine. 260 horsepower, zero to 60 in six seconds. This makes it one of the quicker entries in the segment. And the beauty about the Outback is the fact that it's kind of a sleeper. This looks like your grandmother's or grandfather's car, especially painted in this shade of cinnamon brown metallic, but it's super quick off the line. It'll actually scare a lot of people who expect this thing to be slow. And really, if you go with the turbocharged engine, it makes the Outback an appealing entry, an appealing alternative to a lot of SUVs in the segment. And when you look at the pricing, the Outback technically is the one that's a little bit more expensive versus the VW. It starts at a little over 26,600 bucks. The Volkswagen starts at around just under $25,000. Both of these cars in general sticker for around $40,000 for their fully loaded trims, which makes them an intriguing option because for $40,000, do you want a traditional compact crossover or do you want a lifted up midsize station wagon? Me, I think the station wagon is cool, but until VW actually puts a real motor, the GTI's motor in that thing, I'm gonna easily give my money to the 2020 Subaru Outback, which... Which you just did. <laughs> which I just did. Which my spouse just did anyways. <laughs> a little bit of influence. Yes. But I'm not biased, don't worry. So, can we, can we include that part of you among the city? Okay. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this interesting comparison between a wagon and a compact SUV. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.